This morning I'm going to be talking about how to write a PowerShell function and I'm going to do a very simple function this morning. The purpose of this is to teach how to do something very basic because in the coming weeks we're going to be doing more complicated things in PowerShell. Um, one of the reasons why we might use PowerShell over T-SQL is the environment that we're in restricts some of our freedom in T-SQL. Uh, I'll give you a, a really good example of that. Right now, in the environment that I'm in, most companies you work for, if they have multiple servers, have no issue with using link servers. The new environment we're going to will not be utilizing link servers. And the reason is because they've caused a lot of problems in the past. And so, I would always say this to developer, developers, but in general it's a good idea to know just a couple of methods and approaches to doing things. And the reason is for what's happening in our environment is if someone was limited to their knowledge of link servers, they would suddenly have some problems because you now have to get these servers to communicate without link servers. Well, PowerShell and SSIS can communicate to these, the servers with no problems. Um, there's no issues whatsoever. So we have like, let's say, 25, I believe, in dev in our new environment, and PowerShell can speak to all 25 of them, uh, no matter which server it's a part of. Same thing with SSIS. Well, another thing about our company is our company doesn't generally like SSIS packages. So a lot of people who have business intelligence, they would come into the company and they would find that, well, that's not something that they value, is business intelligence. And part of that is when dealing with troubleshooting, I kind of like to laugh about this, but... When troubleshooting SSIS, uh, it is you have to open a whole separate process up. And then if you have configuration files or tables, then you have to open those. And so it can get very complicated very quickly if something breaks in production. And so SSIS is all fun and games as long as it runs perfectly. But when it does break, um, I've seen it create a huge mess and then people get very frustrated. The other thing I've learned with colleagues is that they don't always understand an SSIS package. They'll open it up and they'll ask like, hey, does it do this? Hey, does it do this? Whereas they're expected to know T-SQL, they're expected to know code. So this morning we're going to talk about so how to write just a basic function. Because as we go in, in coming weeks, things are going to get a little bit more complicated. So you'll see some similarities between T-SQL's create function and create stored procedure. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a function, we're going to call it return stream. And in this case, I'm just going to do one parameter right now. So let me explain. We have the function. We don't do create in this case, we just do function. We have the function name, and then we have a parameter. Okay, that's this right here is an object, p. Okay, if uh, as a case in point, if I did this in PowerShell, I create an object called x, I put x, the string hello world, and x, and then in this case I called the object and it produces hello world. Okay, so PowerShell, unlike T-SQL, is an object-oriented language. And in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to do p plus 1, oh I'm sorry, and then I'm going to return p. Okay, so we have the function, we have the function name, we accept a parameter. So since we've done a lot of stored procedures in these videos, consider it kind of like a stored procedure um, or consider a function. We pass in a parameter to the function or the stored procedure. The procedure or the function does something in this case, it returns that result. Now, the difference with the stored procedure is it may execute a query or it may execute you know, an insert or update or delete. Um, in this case, the function is going to return a value. And so you'll see that when we call this, and by the way, this, let's do it this way. There you go. Okay. 
So this right here is, is basically our output, is two. So again, we could, and we could test this out. We'd be like, okay, what happens if we do eight? And we get nine. So it's taking this parameter that we're entering. It's going through this. It's saying, hey, P is going to equal P plus one. So whatever this parameter was, we're gonna add one to it, and then we're gonna return the result, P. Okay, so, and to make this less confusing, let's go ahead and just do Y and see what happens. Okay, so now we're entering the parameter p. We're saying now the object y is going to equal p plus one. And we get the same output. And we could do p plus, uh, p equals p plus one or y equals p plus one as long as we return y. But in this case, since we have y equals p plus one, let's go ahead and say, let's return p instead and let's see what we get. And you'll notice we get our input. We input a date, we got eight, because we didn't add here. So, all right, so that's pretty simple, and as you'll notice, it's return string. In that case, we're returning a number. So let's go ahead and do a string. So, let's take two parameters. And let's do x equals, oops, and then return x. Okay, so now we have return string, and we're going to accept, and as much as I can't stand hello world, I'm going to go ahead and use it. And the result is hello world. And you'll notice that we didn't put spaces here. It created the space from here. Now this is a string, so of course it's going to um, take that. Now inside of a function, you can actually call another function. For instance, we could do p equals p dot replace. Replaces a function it's almost identical uh, to t sql. The difference is in t sql you have three parameters. In this case, you only have two. We're going to replace H, and we're going to replace it with capital H. So, so now we have P equals P dot replace. So again, this P is going to be the result of this right here, of that line of code. And you'll notice it capitalized hello. And again, we can do the same thing with uh, P2. We can say uh, P2 equals P2 p2.replace and we can say um, we're going to replace w with w and now it's hello world of course we could even uh, go a step further and we could do world and we can go just to show you how much we can use And there you go. Okay, so in that case, what we did is we replaced it with a whole long string. We replaced all of world with way. That's too cliche. Okay, so functions work very similar to T SQL functions or stored procedures. Of course, the difference here is that they're going to be returning something. But the the case is that we pass parameters in, and again, we could just put a bunch of parameters here, and it's going to return a result. And the reason why you'll see that is important coming in the future is that. We can set up a function which is going to take strings that will be part of a connection string. Then we can call that function to connect to an instance of SQL Server. So we don't have to keep writing things. We don't have to keep, you know, always writing PowerShell scripts. Now we have a function that always connects. Um, and then, of course, from there we can do whatever tasks we need. Uh, for instance, if we want to re-index all our columns, if we want to back up the log, I mean, sorry, back up the database, if we want to shrink the log, etc. Uh, these functions allow for code reuse, and these parameters then are basically the only pieces of the puzzle that we change. One quick note before I go, uh, in PowerShell, a lot of people think that SQL Server, you know, you can't call PowerShell scripts, or you have to call PowerShell scripts from the desktop like here. The reason why I do this is just to, to demonstrate it. But in SQL Server, 
there is SQL Server Agent. Now, this is SQL Express, so this doesn't have it, but SQL Server Agent, when you create a job in the steps, when you're going through the steps, you can choose to run a PowerShell script. So that's one of the ways in which you can call PowerShell inside of SQL Server Agent.